Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'll be showing you how to design an icon in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10 release candidate 1. If you're watching this using release candidate 2 or in the future the stable GIMP 2.10 version, you're going to be able to do everything that you see in this tutorial. But this tutorial came at the request of one of my subscribers, so thank you for that. Uh, you guys can request tutorials at any time. But I am going to show you how to design this icon from scratch. I'm not going to be importing anything. So we are going to use some shapes here. We're going to use a layer mask, and then we're going to create this flat shadow right here. And with this icon, you can save it without a background, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I just hid that background here, and then you can also have this circle be whatever color you want it to be and you can have the elements within the icon itself be whatever you want it to be as well. But before we get into all that, of course I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. We've got tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy and this has been named the highest rated course so thank you to everybody who's enrolled in the course and rated it. And we're almost at 200 students enrolled at the time of this tutorial, so thanks again to everybody that's enrolled. And of course I'll include a link to this as well as a link to our Patreon page where you guys can become a patron and support our channel and help us grow. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. This is a fairly easy tutorial to do. And I'm going to start by going to File, New, and just creating a new composition. Now keep in mind when you're creating this icon how large you need the icon to be obviously so I'm going to just do this at 400 by 400 but if you need it to be smaller or larger just take that into account. And then under the advanced options you can keep the resolution high if you ever plan on printing this or you can just go ahead and set this to 72 by 72 pixels per inch. That will usually get the job done for the web. And you can change the precision as you want. I'm going to keep this at 8-bit because this is just an icon. But you can change this to 32-bit floating point if you want a little bit more data in here. And these settings do differ from what we usually do with the image editing and that's because images usually have more information and there is a possibility that they're going to be used for print. Whereas with things like icons, these are usually going to be used for the web where you want to save as much space as possible, especially when you're uploading to something like a website. So go ahead and click OK. And now we have our composition here and we've got a white background and that's all right. We can either just keep that or we can hide it later if we need to. But I'm going to start by creating a circle, so I'll grab my ellipse tool. And I have the fixed aspect ratio option checked here, and this is set to 1 to 1. You can literally type 1 colon 1. And what this ensures is that this is a perfect circle when we draw it. So you'll see when I click and drag that this is a perfect circle and I don't have to hold anything. And down here I want my size to be 400 by 400. If yours is a little less, just go ahead and change one of the values here to 400 and the other one will automatically change to that value. And you do want to make sure that this is perfectly aligned on the canvas since it is the same size as the canvas and it can get cut off if it's not. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'll just name this circle and I'll make sure the fill width is set to transparency and click OK. And now I'm going to come over here and choose my foreground color and this can be whatever color you want the final icon to be. And so in the original I went with a a bright green as one of them and then I went with this more uh, sort of salmon color as the other. But for this tutorial I'm going to do like a lighter blue here and I'll click OK. And I'll go ahead and fill this in and this can be whatever color you want it to be. Uh, feel free to copy this HTML notation by the way if you want to use the exact same blue that I'm using here. So now I'll go to select none and we've got our circle filled in here. If you want to make sure that this is perfectly aligned, you can grab your alignment tool, go ahead and click on that circle and just hit distribute horizontal centers of targets and distribute vertical centers of targets and that will center up our circle in our composition. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to draw the body of the phone here. And so I'll just grab my rectangle select tool and I have the rounded corners option checked here. And I'm just going to decrease the radius of the corners here because I don't want them to be too rounded. And I'll go ahead and click and drag to draw this. I don't want this to take up too much of the circle. So I'll just draw it about there, maybe shrink it down a tiny bit. And I'm just eyeballing this. There's no uh, particular size or anything that I wanted this to be, so I'm just eyeballing it. And I'll just get it to around the center. It doesn't have to be exact right now. But I'll create a new layer and I'll just name this Phone Body and click OK. And now you can fill this in with whatever color you want. In our case I'll just use white so I'll switch my background color to the foreground since that was white. 
you can always just click on here and uh, just click and drag to the top left corner and that'll create white or just type F's in your HTML notation, six F's. Click OK. I'll grab my bucket fill tool and go ahead and fill that in and go to select none. And now we have the body of our phone here. Now this is probably off center. What I need to do is go to layer, crop to content, and that'll crop the layer size down to the size of our phone body, which will allow us now to grab our alignment tool and we can click on this and then click those distribute options again, uh, horizontal and vertical, and that will center align our phone body. So now what I wanna do is draw that screen in the middle. So I'll just create a new layer and you can name this phone screen and I'll click OK. And then we'll grab our rectangle select tool again, but we're gonna uncheck the rounded corners option. And I'll just draw the screen somewhere in the middle here. We do wanna leave room for the uh, ear piece and the mouth piece down here. So keep that in mind. Just leave a little bit of space. And there's two options here. You can either uh, fill this in with the same color as your circle, or you can just create a layer mask from this and uh, fill this in with the layer mask. I'm gonna go with that first option, so I'll just change the color to the blue we used, grab our bucket fill tool and fill this in, and make sure you're on that phone screen layer before you do that. Go to select none. And the reason I chose that option is it's going to be easier to center this, so I'll go to layer, crop to content again, and that'll shrink our layer size down. And then I'll grab my alignment tool and click on here, and then just go ahead and, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong one. Uh, but that works too. Just go ahead and click to uh, align this to the center. And now this is center aligned. And now I wanna draw the earpiece and the mouthpiece, so I will draw a rectangle again, and I'm gonna check the rounded corners option again. And this time I'm just gonna draw a smaller rectangle. This doesn't need to be quite as large. And then I'll create a new layer, and we'll name this phone earpiece. I might've called it a mouthpiece a second ago. That's all right. Uh, I'll click okay. And I'll fill that in with the blue there. Select none. I'll go ahead and keep that as is. It might be a little large, but that's all right. So I'll go to layer, crop to content. That'll shrink our layer down again. Grab the alignment tool, click on that, and then just click distribute to the center. Uh, this time I don't want to use the vertical centers of target because I'm not centering this to the middle of the image. I'm just, uh, or the center of the image here. I'm just centering it here uh, in its current position. So I only need to center it the one time. And then I will go ahead and grab my ellipse select tool and make sure that fixed is still checked because I do want to draw a perfect circle. And I'll just click and drag until I get about the size I want. And this is for the mouthpiece. And then I will fill this in with the blue. Actually first uh, create a new layer and name this phone mouthpiece. Click OK. And then fill this in with the blue and go to select none. And then click on that layer and go to layer crop to content to shrink that layer size down, the layer boundary. Grab the alignment tool again, click on this, and then hit distribute horizontal centers of targets, and that will horizontally align that. And I'll just grab my move tool real quick. Now you can see we've got our finished phone here, our phone icon, so that was pretty quick, but now what we need to do is add the shadow. And the key here is uh, we're gonna draw a rectangle for the shadow. You can uncheck the rounded corners option but we need to know what width that we want to draw the shadow at, but we can't really tell because our shadow is gonna be at a 45 degree angle, but right now the phone is at a complete 90 degree angle. So what I did is I went over here to my phone body layer and just duplicated it to create a copy. And then I grabbed my rotate tool and I went ahead and clicked to rotate this. And we can just go ahead and choose 45 degrees and click rotate. And that looks a little funky right now, but we'll fix it later. And now what I wanna do is grab my rectangle select tool. So go ahead and draw this. And you want this to be roughly the same size here as this uh, copy layer, this phone body copy layer, but you don't want it to be larger than this layer because that'll uh, not work in the final image. So you'll see here that, that there is a little bit of overlap with the corner there, and that's actually what we want. And then if I move this over, there's also some overlap here, and that's what we want. And you might even want to add a little bit more overlap to this, but you don't want to overdo it. So if you see some white pixels coming through, that's okay. Just a little bit there. And we can always scale it up if we need to. All right, so once we've done that, I'll go ahead and grab my bucket fill tool and then fill this in with black and go to select none. 
Now we can delete our foam body copy layer and come back over to our shadow layer, grab our rotate tool and click on this and then we'll set the rotate to negative 45 degrees and hit rotate. And now that's been rotated. And I'll drop the opacity of this just to double check on here. And so you can see there's a little bit of overlap with the corners here and that's all right. Uh, if you want less, you can go back and just uh, adjust the selection area so there's a little bit less overlap. And I clicked on this with the move tool and used my arrow keys to just align this a little bit. Now I'll come over here to my circle and right click on it and go to alpha to selection. Then go to select invert and come over here to your shadow layer and hit the delete key. Then go to select none. And now you'll see the shadow ends at the uh, circle here. Then right click on this and go to add layer mask and choose white full opacity under initialize layer mask 2 and click add. And grab your paintbrush tool, make sure the color is still set to black and you can just go ahead and paint on your layer mask and that will erase all of this excess here. And all you got to do is paint up to where the shadow intersects with the phone there. So you don't want any of the shadow peeking through over here. But you don't have to erase all of this because it's not going to show through. So we'll go to about there. And then you can click and drag this layer below the foam body layer. And now we have a nice shadow here and this is what creates our flat icon look. And you can decrease the opacity a little bit if you want the shadow to be less prominent to about there. And then we can grab our zoom tool and hold control and zoom out a little bit. And now you can see what our icon looks like from afar. So now if you want to save this icon without a background, you can go ahead and hide that background and go to File, Export As, and I'll change the name of this to Phone Icon, and then select File Type by Extension, and we'll come down to our PNG file type, and that's going to ensure that this saves uh, for the web and without a background. And I'll hit Export, and I'll hit Export again, and there you have your phone icon. If you want to create multiple colors for your circle background, you can always just right click and go to add alpha to selection, create a new layer, and you can name this circle two, for example, hit OK. And then you can grab your bucket fill tool and fill this with whatever color you want. So you saw in the first example that I filled this in with like a green color. And you can do the same with the uh, screen and the earpiece, just right click, go to alpha to selection, and create a new layer and fill that in with the new color. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. And you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course on Udemy from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as a link to our Patreon page in the description of this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.